half marathon season is upon us. And whilst you might be all in, focused on that race you've got coming up, you also need to think about your taper. A really good taper can absolutely elevate your performance on race day to get you that coveted PB. I've also witnessed how getting the taper wrong can have disastrous consequences. Fear not, because I'm gonna explain why the taper is so important and how you can taper your own training leading into a half marathon race. And I'm also gonna talk about how not to taper, as well as giving you some insights into my best results from tapering in the past and some tips for getting the most out of your taper, both physically and mentally. A lot of the people can find the process of tapering quite anxiety inducing, which, especially if you're a numbers person, is totally understandable because you can see your weekly volume creeping down, your sessions are getting shorter, and it takes away some of that routine element a little bit. So later on, I'm gonna help you rationalize this and hopefully make the taper a more enjoyable and less anxious experience. But if you're sat here thinking, Philly, I still don't even know what a taper is. Do I need a roll of masking tape or a tape measure for it? Let's get the definition out of the way first. The taper, in this instance, for the half marathon, is reducing the volume of your training roughly two weeks to 10 days out from race day. The aim of decreasing your training load, your volume, is to improve recovery and increase rest time so that your body and mind is left feeling fresh, relaxed, energized and in the best possible fighting condition come race day. No residual tiredness or aches and pains in sight. That's the aim. And the performance benefits cited in real scientific studies when tapering for a half marathon performance range from 5% to a 22% improvement in performance. So the bottom line is this process works and it's in your interests to taper for a goal half marathon race to improve your performance. So how do you do it? How you taper your training is gonna to be totally individual to you. For the same reason that your training routine is different to mine or to your running buddies. You've got different starting points in your average weekly volume. There's differences in when you do your workouts, how many workouts, how many runs a week there are. And all of that is gonna influence what your taper looks like. Firstly, let's look at the time period out from the race. How far out should you start your taper? For a half marathon, I'd recommend starting the taper from two weeks or 10 days out or somewhere in between those two. And the fact is, if you've got two weeks to go until your goal race, you're not gonna gain any fitness. Adaptations from training take at least two weeks from that training stimulus to translate into fitness. So let go of gaining any fitness and say hello to the taper, which is there to maintain your fitness, but also leave you feeling really good on race day. Now, whether you start two weeks or 10 days or 12 days out is totally up to you. And it's one of those things that I'd suggest you try out and see what you prefer. Some people like to do a longer taper, other people like to stay in their routine and they feel better off a slightly shorter one. So play around with it. I always sit here and film forgetting that we have paid a lot of good money to have a really nice background here that I can use when filming. That's literally what it's for. So let me go and put the background up. Put the background up? Apply the background. Today? Oh no. It might look grey now, but it's not gonna be. Going for a sort of pale yellowy Great. Now, I'm gonna give you a few rules that you can follow that will make creating your own taper a lot more simple. And then after that, I'm gonna take you through an example. So, rule number one, reduce the volume a little at the start of your taper and more towards the end as you get closer to the race. That's basically what we mean by tapering. It's like a funnel. Taper more at the bottom end of that funnel, close to the race, and a little bit less at the start, it's, I'm drawing a funnel here, okay? <laughs> 
So your usual 13 mile long run, exactly two weeks before the race, for example, might become 12 miles, but maybe you have an hour easy on a Thursday, your race is on the Sunday, that might be cut down to half an hour or 20 minutes. So that reduction is a much bigger percentage as you get closer to the race. Rule number two, maintain intensity ratio. Cutting back on your volume is where most of the taper happens, but some of your harder sessions should also get shorter, as will your easy runs. But the intensity ratio, for example, having 80% of your training easy and 20% of it hard, stays the same. So you might have five by 400 meters at 5k pace on your Tuesday as your session with your race at the weekend rather than 10 by 400 or 6 by a k. It's much shorter. And rule number three, follow as close to your usual routine as possible, probably plus one rest day. An extra rest day the week of a race is a really great way to cut back on volume and to promote that rest and recovery. So let's say you normally have one rest day a week and you take that on a Monday. It's a great idea to take a second one, but space it out. So maybe stick it on the Thursday if your race is at the weekend. Now for that example, I promised you. Now this whiteboard is usually reserved for my weekly diary. So I've sacrificed this for you guys for this video. And I'll try my best to make it a little bit neater than the one that I did on the paper with the Sharpie because that was pretty bad. So let's draw out someone's imaginary training plan, their typical routine. I'm gonna say that this person is taking a rest day every Monday and every Thursday. Typically, they'll have a workout on a Tuesday, which might be a tempo, sometimes they do hills. It varies week to week. Including warm up and cool down for those workout days, they tend to be running eight to 10 kilometers. Then their second harder day of the week is on a Friday. If they've had a tough workout on the Tuesday, they might stick with a steady or progression run. Or if it's been a slightly shorter session, like the hill session, perhaps they'll do a fart leg and go on the track. Again, they're totaling between eight to 10 K, including warm up and cool down for those days. Nice and simple. Wednesday and Saturday is where they do their bread and butter easy runs between five to 8K pretty routinely. And on Sunday, they do a long run, which can be between 16 to 20K, depending on the volume they've done earlier on that week. Which means that their typical weekly volume is between 44 to 54 kilometers. Notice how I'm using Ks here, guys. Just thought I'd acknowledge that. I usually work in miles, but I've had a lot of complaints. So I thought for this example alone, I'd use Ks. I'm, I'm not intending to change my my units of measurement anytime soon. So on average each week, they're doing 49 kilometers. And I nearly forgot to mention, they're also a very good athlete that does their weekly strength and conditioning on a Wednesday after their easy runs. Let's say that their goal half marathon race is on that Sunday. So we've got three weeks here to look back from, and I'm gonna give this person a two week taper. They've tried that in the past, that's what works for them, so we're going with two weeks. Exactly two weeks before the race, they're just gonna bring their long run down a smidge. So instead of 16 to 20K, they're doing between 14 and 18 kilometers, which means the total volume for that week is hardly changed, down at 47 kilometers. Just a smidge. We're just starting the taper here. So they've rested on the Monday, and then going into Tuesday, we're actually gonna leave this workout alone. We move on to Wednesday, and we're just gonna creep their easy run down a smidge by 1K, and then we're leaving the strength and conditioning in there. They can do their usual routine. Friday, we're gonna bring that session down by 2K. Again, the easy run on Saturday is brought down by 2K, and the long run is brought down by four kilometers on each end. So that week, they could do between 36 to 42 kilometers, which is below their typical weekly volume range even if they do the higher end of that. And they're probably gonna even out doing around 39 kilometers, which is 10K less than their typical weekly average. So about a 20% reduction in volume the week before race day. Then we get to race week. On the Tuesday, they're still gonna do their tempo workout, but it's gonna be sliced in half to 5K total instead of 10K. Wednesday, we keep the easy run the same as the week before. For the strength and conditioning though, I want weights either removed moved from the equation and we just do mobility and body weight exercises or 
you can miss the SNC for this week. It's the only time on race week when you can get away with taking it out. Thursday stays as a rest day, and then Friday we're switching things up, so they're actually gonna do an easy run with some strides tacked on the end. So we're bringing the volume down, keeping the intensity in there by adding the strides on to the end of the easy run, and they're totaling four to 6K instead of their usual eight to 10. Saturday, we get an extra bonus rest day to bring that volume down even more and to promote the rest and recovery. And then Sunday, race day arrives and they're feeling so fresh and ready to attack it because of this wonderful taper they've done. So at the end of race week, they could be running between 34 to 39K. It's likely they're gonna balance that in the middle and run 36 kilometers, which is only 15K pre-race day because the half marathon itself is 21k. Now I appreciate that this is a very simplified example but hopefully it gives you an idea of how you can do that kind of funneling taper effect on your own training before the half marathon race. Now I've always tapered for key races and I'll show you my Copenhagen marathon taper in a minute. But the reason why I taper for the, for the big goal races I have is because I find it not only helps me feel physically ready, but the taper also signifies the time to start thinking about my race, my race strategy and mentally preparing myself. I'll start thinking about the goals that I have, really refining that down and marrying that up with a specific race strategy, how I'm gonna get there on the day. And the extra downtime that you get from tapering is a great opportunity to do just that. Why not sit down on that extra rest day you have or the extra 20 minutes you have the Sunday before the race because your long run's shorter and really think about and write down what is my A, B and C goal for this race? And how am I gonna get there? What am I gonna do, think and feel in the first 5K around halfway and in those really tough closing kilometers or miles of that race? Break it down mentally and use the taper as your time to do that mental preparation. And there's something that I do throughout a key training block, but it might be a bit extreme for you. Maybe it's something that you'd consider doing just for your taper, and that is cutting out alcohol. I won't have any alcohol in the 12 to 14 weeks sometimes up to four months leading up to a key race. I'll typically just have a glass of wine, a Christmas dinner, or when there's a reason to celebrate outside of my competitive season. And maybe you could try doing this just on a smaller scale by cutting out alcohol during the taper, if you're a drinker that is. And a great way to do this without sacrificing your socializing time or that relaxation you get from having a drink is to switch to an alcohol-free alternative. And one that I can't recommend enough if you're gonna try this out is the best alcohol-free beer that I have ever tasted and better than most regular beers is Days. Bold, balanced and vibrant, our refreshing pale ale has tropical overtones and a satisfyingly clean grapefruit finish. Yep. Days make a lager and a pale ale, which gives you the freedom to enjoy that tinny that you love, whether that's with your friends, after a run, or in the evening at the weekend, but without the hangover. So you can go out and smash that park run you got lined up the next day, or you can elevate your taper to give you just that extra edge come race day. Days have very kindly given me a discount code so that you can try it for yourself. So use code philly20 at daysbrewing.com or follow the link in the description so that you can enjoy the best tasting alcohol-free beer around instead of cutting it out completely. Huge thanks to Days for supporting the tapers of all of the beer loving runners out there and filling my fridge with alcohol-free beers that I have to literally fight Daniel off for. I'm just drinking a beer at 3.30 on a Wednesday. <laughs> now this is my marathon taper that I did before the Copenhagen marathon. It's just the weekly mileage totals, but it gives you an idea of how much I actually cut down from my norm. So the week pre-taper, if you like, that was 
just under four weeks out from the race, if we're starting from the Monday, was 89 miles. We then enter week one of the taper because for a marathon, you tend to start two and a half, three weeks out rather than one and a half, two weeks out for a half marathon. And I took that down to 84 miles. Then we get to pre-race week, ultimate anxiety inducing mode. And I clocked 63 miles, which is nearly 20 less than the week before. And then on race week, I did 52 miles. Hopefully Daniel has converted those two kilometers on the screen for me so that people don't hound me in the comments. Of course. And that 52 miles on race week includes 26.2 that are from the race itself. So half of my mileage was before the race, pretty much. And then the other half was on race day. Similar to the example I gave you earlier on. So what happens if you get it wrong? How can you get a taper wrong? By not scaling back enough or in some rare cases by scaling back too much. And getting the taper wrong is gonna compromise your recovery and the adaptations from all of the hard work you've done. Without a doubt, the biggest mistake you can make in your taper is not scaling it back enough and trying to stick with your usual weekly volume totals. The most common mistake people make is fighting the taper and trying to not reduce their training as much as they should. Which is ridiculous because the taper is literally there to allow your body to come out of a state of breakdown from the hard training you've been doing so that it can adapt and recover fully. And without a taper, you'll be on the starting line two steps backwards. Trust me, I've done it when I've put myself in a race intentionally untapered because it's not been a goal race and I'm training through it. and it's it's a lot harder to run your best. It is possible to overdo the taper by cutting it down too much, but to be honest, to do this, you'd nearly have to completely stop in your tracks and not run at all. So long as you're continuing to run on the days that you normally do and you're bringing that down, add the extra rest day in on race day, you can't go wrong. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing nothing for two weeks because you'll stand on that start line and feel pretty rusty. Rusty spoons. And I can't hammer this home enough. Get this taper right, bring your training down, and in the half marathon, it can be a matter of two, three plus minutes. Get it wrong, and you're effectively adding that time on by being more tired on the start line. So my parting words of wisdom to you are, Enjoy the taper, or try to enjoy it, and trust the process. It's there because it's tried and tested. All of the elites are doing this at their goal races. It works for them, and it works for recreational runners too. And use that time, like I said, to finesse your mental game and work on that race strategy, but also relax. Appreciate the fact that you've done the hard work to get you here, the hay is in the barn, as they say, and put your feet up. Rest hard, enjoy an alcohol-free beer, and use that extra free time to do stuff you wouldn't normally be able to do, so long as it doesn't expend extra energy. So binge watch a few episodes of that Netflix show you've been watching. Catch up with old friends, don't stay up too late, and don't go taking up a new sport because that's gonna have the opposite effect. And lastly, don't try anything new. This is not the time for trying out new shoes, new kit, new fueling strategies. Keep everything the same as what you've tried and tested during your training block and trust that the power of the taper will get you there stronger. If you've got a taper coming up, let me know what race you're doing and I really hope that you can avoid the taper tantrums thanks to watching this video. And just remind yourself that you've earned this, okay? This is the easiest bit that you get to do right at the end before that big dance. And remember while you're out there as well, to love the grind.